What's happening, everybody? Welcome to another episode here at the Side Guys Football Forum. I'm one of your co-hosts on the side, joined as always by my good friend, my good buddy, the other half of the Side Guys, Tad the Side. We're getting here into week seven, Tad. Um, both wearing red because as of recording, Spider-Man 2 came out on PlayStation. And so I, I should have like, blue. I, I should have blue. Damn. See, but I'm specifically wearing my Spider-Man shirt, too. Oh, so no, like, I'm that's just, why I'm, I'm just wearing, wearing all red, red shirt. shirt. <laughs> it was, it was a clean, <laughs> I haven't done laundry in a while. It was the cleanest shirt I have. It's just it, it worked. There but that go. does work out well because nice, apparently nice. a truck crashed in the middle of Times Square. Uh, was it in Times Square? I thought it was I in Australia. No it was Australia. God. I thought it was New York. It doesn't matter. Either way, I'm very frustrated right now. The game came out last night at 11 p.m. I had work today. I really want to play this game. And then I have a bunch of stuff to do. I've yet to play a second of this game. And you can bet when I get back at around 1 a.m. after recording this episode, now that this episode's giving me out, I am going to play that game way too long. Saturday tomorrow. You're all good. Yeah, exactly. I'll, I'll sleep until one or two. It'll be fine. <laughs> My students do it. Apparently it works for them. Yeah. Why the hell not? Exactly. Why the hell not? So, but yeah, so very excited for that game and also very excited for this weekend, Ted, the weekend sort of, uh, Obviously, football weekend. Like, I mean, you obviously got Saturday with all the college football. And, of course, we're going to get to Sunday with all of our fantasy football content. But we brought this up in our waiver wire episode earlier in the week. But just this is sort of – um, I've seen a few articles, Ted. They call it um, bye week Mageddon. Like, Dude, I mean, there's six teams on a bye week. For this real. one's pretty rough. And just to remind folks out there who are listening or watching us on YouTube, we have six teams on a bye week. And those six teams are the Cincinnati Bengals. The Dallas Cowboys, the Tennessee Titans, the New York Jets, the Carolina Panthers, and the Houston Texans. So lots of quality players are going to be on a bye week this week. So make sure you're adjusting your rosters accordingly because, yeah, you're going to have to do a little bit of finagling for sure this weekend. A little bit of finagling. I'll tell you about the biggest finagle I've ever finagled is this. Is the, the combination of bad injury luck with bad roster luck, with bad bye week luck, caused the biggest finagle I thought I'd never do. I was smart. When I drafted this player for $64, everyone was kind of looking at me like, really? I'm like, I'm telling you, he's going to be the fantasy MVP, and God damn it, I was right. It's Christian McCaffrey. I was writing with McCaffrey all season, being like, I told all of you. And then, of course, he goes down in the early slave games last weekend. I'm like, okay. Yep. Not mm -hmm, great. Mm -hmm. And then, and then your 49ers decided to do the annoying thing. Has he been ruled out yet? I don't even think he's been ruled out yet. Not confirmed. All Would three, um, himself, Debo Samuel, and Trent Williams are on track to play, but then they're also on track to yeah. not play. Yeah, so. yeah exactly. <laughs> God. Because they play on a Monday night, they sort of treat today like Thursday. So there's going to have a practice tomorrow on Saturday. So that's really going to tell us whether they're going to play the entire game or they're going to play part of and it. That's, and that's not going to play anything. And that's another thing. The whole fact that the schedule just how this injury happened to happen right right as they're playing on a Monday night game. Like if he was playing Sunday night, this would be way easier to deal with. Anyway, point being is I have a star fantasy running back on later slates. It's David Montgomery. Obviously he's in, he has, by the way, has already been ruled out. So yep. I was desperate. I'm desperate. David Montgomery looks like he's going to miss a couple weeks. Chris McCaffrey, who the hell knows? I'm two and four in my current league. So I'm just like, I cannot. And by the way, do you want to know our fantasy football league punishment? Like my main league. Do you want to know our punishment for this year? Oh, has it been determined? I thought you guys it has. No, it, it okay. has been determined. Right. Okay. And this will make it very clear why I want to avoid it. Denny's is back. <laughs> wow. Okay. Yeah, I am not I, doing I that again. For those of you I who don't know, for those of you who don't know, our fantasy punishment. I got, I think that was, this was the first year of the podcast or maybe it was the second it was. year. I was believe it the it first was. year? I think so. I think I, so. I lost our fantasy football league because of bad luck, not because I'm bad at fantasy football. And so I had to go for oh shut up. So I had to go. <laughs> you're trying you to, to help us place. You are trying to help out beat me. Correlates. Freaking Judas over here to, uh, cheering for my failure. <laughs> Point being is I had to go that to is, Denny's. That, that is very true. Yeah, no, I, I appreciate you not even trying to cover that up. No, definitely not. Yes, yeah, son of a bitch. But anyway, 
you had to go to Denny's or some 24 hour pancake house for the full 24 hours. And that mother effort, I know you're like, Oh, you got this from the guy that went viral on Twitter. I did it three days before him. Yeah. Yeah. We have proof of this. So anyway, yeah. well, we don't because you shut down our Twitter account, but anyway, no, we still have the video on our YouTube account. So we still have the video. There we go. So do we have proof of it? Bottom line being is I'm not going back to goddamn Denny's. So by week, Mageddon caused me to trade Christian McCaffrey. Because I was like, I cannot put up with like, you know, scrapping together all these running backs because there are no running backs to scrap together. So like, this is a very precarious week of like, you know, crafting together your lineup. It's a very, very risky, uh, fancy week for everyone involved. I cannot tell you how crazy I went when Christian Kirk scored that late touchdown last night. That might have saved my week or my season. That helped a lot of people for sure. Him scoring at the very end there for sure. So, and I think on the I flip side, I'm so stressed. anybody who had Calvin Ridley as far as their fantasy managers, oh, they were very upset that he got that involved. left foot that very left little foot. in that game. So, yeah. Um, so yeah, but like we talked about, there's a lot of teams on a bye week. There's obviously a lot of players dealing with some injuries as well. So we had to make some adjustments. You had to sort of work your magic off the waiver wire and using your bench for sure. Maybe flip some trades like Chad did, obviously. But we got you covered. We want to give you some under-the-radar starts and sits that I think can help you this week here in Week 7. So, Tad, I'm going to start you off with a quarterback here as a start. I'm not going to sort of, you know, go sort of, you know, give you something new. I'm going to give you something that I brought up earlier in the week. And this is a guy that I brought up in our waiver wire episode as a pickup. And I think double down here. And I think you need to start this guy this week because he has a good matchup. And that's Sam Howell of the Washington commanders. I mean, how he was your pickup of the week at quarterback too. Exactly. I think so. I think this is a good matchup for him. And also you look at the fact that he has scored at least 18 fantasy points in three straight games. Now he's played the New York giants. The New York giants has just been, you know, even with Tyrod Taylor, they looked okay, but their defense was still a little bit shaky. Okay. Um, They were one good play call away from beating the Buffalo bills. That's true. That's very true. But yeah, I'm not sure what's going to happen this week. Daniel Jones is questionable. He may be able to suit up in this game. So if he suits up, then that could be either a bad thing or a good thing for a Giants offense there. So we'll see about that. You know what? We're going to put Hold on. Sorry to interrupt you. Last time I'll do it, and then I'll let you finish your point. We're going to put down the poll tonight. Not like tonight, like, oh, this episode got released. We're going to do it tonight of recording. Giants fans. Who do you want to start? Tyrod Taylor? Daniel Jones. <laughs> Daniel Jones. Who gives you more optimism to come away with the win in a crucial divisional matchup? That's the big thing, too. So, yeah, that would be fantastic. Make sure you answer that poll whenever uh, Tad puts it up there. But, yeah, the Giants are also giving up the fifth most points of the NFL, the fourth most yards. So this just screams for an opportunity where Sam Howell and this offense, they could generate a lot of yardage on offense and then play really good defense, and they should be able to come away with the victory here. But, yeah. Sam Howell in a bye week, uh, bye week Mageddon, like we talked about. A lot of team, a lot of players on a bye week this week. I think he's a good spot start this week. I mean, I totally agree. I think Sam Howell is as reached his peak as a fantasy player, and that peak yeah. is a top end streamer. And there's exactly. nothing wrong with that. And I will even tell you this: is I, you know, I, I yes, I kind of gave you crap because that's what we do. But um, I, I and you're, you're actually laughing at this. I don't know if you saw it because, by the way, America can see every fancy move I do. Very true. He, he has Very my true. ESPN login, so he can see everything I do. I am currently writing with Dak Prescott and Sam Howell on my bench. I did see that. I did see that because, and here's why though: is because Sam Howell is almost ten spots higher. Then Dak Prescott. Dak Prescott is currently ranked as QB number 19 in fantasy and half PPR leagues. Sam Howell is currently ranked as QB 11 uh, in half PPR leagues. So it's a very interesting dichotomy there. And my entire point here being is I don't know who to trust when Patrick Mahomes eventually hits his bye week. So because Dak Prescott has been uh, struggling, struggling, don't get me wrong, but... With a 24-point performance coming off the Los Angeles Chargers, a huge game. I think Dak may be primed for you know a rebound, but that's a whole other discussion. Bottom line being is Dak Prescott versus Sam Howell. If I told you that was a legitimate fantasy debate a year ago today, you would have called me crazy. By the way, Amur, happy anniversary. We are a little less than a week away removed from the one-year anniversary of Chris McCaffrey being traded to the 49ers. Really? Okay. Really? Yeah, I had saw special... that. I saw that on Twitter. 
And we had a special breaking news episode too. That was that was honestly wild. my favorite sure. episode of all time. Yeah, but bottom crazy. line being is, I think that the fact that that's even a debate shows how good Sam Howell is. With him, it's entirely opponent based. And by the way, that's a reason why I'm keeping Dak Prescott because who does he play in Week Ten when the Chiefs are on a bye? The New York Giants. There you go. It that's a that's a ba- that's it a bad defense. <laughs> that's a bad defense with the New York Giants. So that is the whole reason why I'm still like kind of having that NFC debate between like who do I play in Week Ten? I can't quite bring myself to give up either one. So until now, I'm just gonna let them battle it out. And I think this week it's gonna be Howell one. Prescott zero. So I'm actually, well, definitely Prescott zero. He's on a buy. So, uh, yeah, no, I'm with that. I think Howell, if you need a streamer, probably your best option at this point, not even one of your best option, your best option. I think so. With the waiver wire being pretty thin, it's the yeah, idea. What are your better options out there for sure? But Ted, if you're looking at the waiver wire, who's a quarterback that you're trying to avoid this week in week seven, or a guy that you may already have rostered that you're like, eh, I don't like this matchup this week. Sit him. I swear to God. I swear. I swear. I like him. I like him. It's just his schedule sucks. I'm benching him two weeks in a row. Jared Goff, I'm sorry, buddy. You're benched. You're yeah, This matchup's a little bit worse compared to his matchup last week. So, yeah, I could sort of see this one sort of playing out um, as a good sit, I'd say. All right. So, remember, we're now week seven, which means the Ravens mm-hmm. have played, if I'm not mistaken, six quarterbacks. <laughs> <laughs> something along those lines correct five or six <laughs> five or six over under two quarterbacks they've allowed 15 or more points to over under okay <laughs> and here's the crazy thing you weren't even close is it zero it's zero wow okay zero okay. they have not allowed a single quarterback to score over 15 points yet this season now here's the thing is because and this was a crazy stat, and part of this Christian McCaffrey trade was I used I picked up Jared Goff on Tuesday on purpose to use him as a kicker during the Christian McCaffrey trade, and it worked like a charm. Because the guy agreed to this trade. We were like it was lined up, by the way. I got Raheem Moster and Saquon Barkley back for uh McCaffrey. So not a bad return, in my opinion. Not bad, not bad, not terrible. I did it a definite downgrade. Don't get me wrong. I'm not like I won that trade. I wasn't out to win that trade. I was out to get like a decent enough to re- return to keep me alive. But anyway, I'm going to be obsessing over this trade for the next few weeks. But po- yeah. point being is right before that trade went through, he kind of, this guy texts me back. My, my league mate texts me back, goes, can you throw in golf as a kicker? I'm like, there it is. I was like, yeah, cause I, I like golf. Don't get me wrong. But that is the only reason I picked him up because he is, I'm not joking here. He is the fifth ranked fantasy quarterback right now. Jared is, Goff, yeah. as it Killing stands, it. is the Killing fifth, it. is a top five fantasy quarterback. Now, here's the interesting thing with that. He's had three games with 15 plus points. He's also had three games under that. Yeah. So he is wildly inconsistent. This is a really, really good defense, as I pointed out. And he is also susceptible. Apparently, I spelled susceptible wrong. How do you spell susceptible? Uh, S U S C E P T I E B L E. See, that's why I did. Say I did it wrong. Okay, then maybe I got it wrong too. Then huh. clearly, <laughs> susceptible. Well, I know what my students' word of the week is going to be next week. Susceptible, but he's also very susceptible. However, you spell it, to being limited uh, in the passing game, and I think that's exactly what's going to happen. Um, this upcoming week. So I think he's going to be on my waiver wire uh, list come Monday when we do our, you know, top quarterbacks to target. Cause he's still available in about 40% of leagues, but as in starting this week, I think, you know, he should ride your bench. I, again, I say this every episode, do not drop him, hold on to him because their schedule lightens up a lot moving forward. So After I think the bye week, it gets a lot easier. For yes. Him. So I think he's going to be a very valuable quarterback moving forward, but I think this week you bench him again. You give your opinion. I'm going to look at susceptible. susceptible. Just you, you go ahead. Susceptible. Yeah, I don't think I have anything else to add, but just like I saw this matchup between Detroit and Baltimore. You also have to look at the fact that they're dealing with a lot of injuries in the backfield. They're going to be out without David Montgomery, which you already brought up earlier. Jameer Gibbs is going to be playing, but I mean, besides him, they're going to be rolling with Craig Reynolds. I mean, just overall, just the situation with the running game could be an issue, and that's sort of how 
Detroit likes to move the ball down the field to get the passing game going. And just, yeah, if they can't establish a good run against the Baltimore Ravens, that just means more pressure at Jared Goff. And so far, he's been living up to it. Like you said, he's the fifth best fantasy quarterback in PPR leagues right now. But if he's putting all, if you're putting all the pressure on him to make plays against a Baltimore defense that's pretty strong, that's where it worries me a little bit more. So yeah, I could see him having a sort of down game this week, even though I like him overall for the rest of the season. Yeah, this is a good sit this week. Okay. So I'm going to give our uh, listeners and our viewers a little background info on this episode is uh, normally we record, well, not normally, but we debate recording this between Thursday and Friday nights. Uh, Thursday night, we almost recorded. We didn't quite do it. Part of the reason was because I was so tired. So I ended up finishing my notes around like 10, 10 30 last night. So Mer, you try spelling susceptible again. S U S C E P T I B L E. Okay. You are correct. Do you want to know okay. what I do? You want to know what I did? Saset table. Like, did you spell it T A B L E? I can't even pronounce what I did. Oh, Lord. Suspectable. 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 Yeah. I, I was so tired. Apparently, I mixed up the C and the P. There you go. <laughs> Suspectable. Got it. Solid. Solid. It's not solid. <laughs> It's really hey, not. It's tired, Ted. It's and all that's good. and that's why we didn't record last night. That makes a ton of sense for sure. All right, let's move on to the running backs here, Tad. I'm going to go with a start at the running back position, so I'm kicking this one off too as well. Um, Jerome Ford of the Cleveland Browns. And so you look at the past couple weeks, Tad, Jerome Ford has actually been kind of a disappointment because I remember, unfortunately, I've been one of those managers. I had Nick Chubb rostered in five of the seven leagues that I play in. I had to make the adjustments. I wasn't able to pick up Jerome Ford in any of the leagues that I play in, but a lot of people did spend a lot of uh, free agent money. If you play in a league where you had to spend free agent money to claim players off the waiver wire. A lot of people were clamoring on Twitter that I spent pretty much all my budget on Jerome Ford because he was going for the answer. And he had two successful games in that game that he replaced the Chubb in and then the next game. But after that, he's been kind of a dud. But I think this is a very good bounce back game, Tad. Unfortunately, it comes against your Indianapolis Colts. We had some unfortunate deals for you, Indianapolis Colts. Their Don't starting defensive about tackle, it. Grover Stewart, has been suspended for six games because of taking performance-enhancing drugs, PED. So he's going to be out for six games. That's going to hurt that defensive line. As much as a lot of DeForest Buckner, he had a good running mate with Grover Stewart. Without him, they're going to have to use a rotation. So I don't know how effective that is going to be. I think Jerome, uh, Jerome Ford can sort of take advantage of that. Also, we're seeing Deshaun Watson in practice. He's been practicing in full so far, but there's still not a concrete decision made as far as whether he's going to start against the Indianapolis Colts. If he doesn't, then obviously we're going to see P.J. Walker again. Um, I think they'll probably lean on the running game a little bit more. But even if Deshaun Watson plays, I just like this matchup a lot more. Cleveland has the eighth best rushing offense in terms of rushing yards. And on the flip side, Indianapolis is middle of the road at 14th in rushing yards allowed. So I think it's a good matchup for Jerome Ford to sort of have a bounce back game and sort of reward people that have rostered him or kept him on their roster instead of dropping him for the, the dud weeks he had in a couple of weeks. So Jerome Ford, good matchup this week. I uh... <laughs> Hard to admit that it's a good pick, right? <laughs> I'm just, I, I, I'll, I'll remember this is an offer on camera, but let's just go for Marvin Harrison Jr. at this point. Because for, <laughs> for those of you who don't know, uh, Richardson's out for the entire year because yep, of course. Yep. Um, I think we brought that up on our waiver wire episode earlier in the week. Which yeah, is, yeah, that has yeah. been confirmed. He is getting season-ending surgery. He is. He's already, he's he's already gotten it. He's already gotten it. He's, he's already uh, got it. Yeah, yeah, I saw. Yeah. Him, I saw him in the sling yeah. on the weekend. The, so I, I wasn't sure whether he yeah. got the surgery or not yet. No, so, okay. I'm ninety percent sure he's ninety uh, percent sure he's already got it. So, uh, no, good pick. I think uh, this is this is going to be an interesting game because Deshaun Watson might be playing finally. Yeah. Exactly. Um, it's looking like he will. And if that's the case, yeah, we're going to get killed. Um, <laughs> now I think it's important though, to further back up your claim is to look back. And this is why, cause I was trying really hard to lowball this guy and he was smart. He was smart. Yell onto him. Cause I'm like, Jerome Ford sucks. He sucks. Give me to him. And I was offering just, and I will admit this shit trades, just trying to get Jerome Ford. Cause I still think this guy's a starting caliber running back in fantasy football. Look at his last two opponents. His last opponent was the San Francisco 49ers, the best defense in the league. They had a bye week before that. Who they played before their bye week? The Baltimore Ravens. I just broke down how good that defense is. That's a tough, you know, back-to-back game matchup. So 
on that. And even then, he at least got close to 10 points, which for a backup running back, all of a sudden thrust into the starting position, not a terrible performance. So I think that moving forward, especially against a bad Indianapolis, a bad banged up and suspended Indianapolis uh, defense, I really, really like this start. Good spot start here for Jerome Ford. Um, Ted, you got a sit for me. Which running backs do you not like this week here, week seven? I really, really hate this sit. Okay. <laughs> I almost wore his jersey today, but it would feel like uh, it would feel a little too it. Judas. Like it just it felt a little too traitorous, but <sighs> nothing against him. It's just the timing. It's not yeah. you, it's me. It's a little bit you. Jonathan Taylor is no longer a fancy starter. He is wow. he, he is no he, longer a fancy starter. That's a he's pretty not, bold claim. He he's not in fancy jail. He's just okay. on fancy probation. Okay. <laughs> got he's it. got that monitor around his ankle. We're gonna keep him on our bench. And if you if he starts sneaking in that flex spot, all of a sudden that monitor is gonna start going off, and then we're gonna start having some problems until he can prove to us otherwise that he can do some good. For our team. Okay. All right. All right. Because so we're not expecting deal. we're not expecting a situations like Ocean's Eleven where George Clooney is calling his PL, but then later in the next scene, no, and yeah, no, he's like, no, of course, of of course, course I would never travel out of the state. <laughs> no, of course not. As he's literally outside. Well, I got that situation. Of okay. God, yeah. Right. Exactly. God, the two thousands must have been so easy for criminals. Now it's just like I can <laughs> literally see your cell phone ping. Shit. But anyway. Yeah, no, don't expect that. Because, uh, look, I'm not blaming the Colts for what they're doing. I'm not saying it's a bad idea. In fact, I actually agree with that. I think it's a good idea. If they just, like, threw him in there, it was like, carry the ball 30 times. It would likely end up he gets hurt. And now we have, what, like $35 million invested in this guy? Yeah. Let's, let's ease him into it, especially now that the season's the lost cause without Anthony Richardson, which, by the way, I never thought I'd say. But not, now that it's just kind of like, let's just see where the season goes, we're the upset guys. Why really like ground and pound with Taylor? We got locked down for the next four years. Uh, Zach Moss is looking really, really good. So why not see what we have in him? So I just, I don't know. I, it's one of those things that I, I think that, you know, why throw him at a defense, by the way, that has been incredible. They are the only reason this Cleveland Browns team is even somewhat a talking point when it comes to the playoff race, because this defense has kept them in a ridiculous amount of games. So I do not see the Indianapolis Colts throwing Jonathan Taylor to the dogs. A K- well, hey, to the dogs. Hey, how about that? That worked right. out. That worked or, out. Or, you know, to make it more specific, the dog known as Miles Garrett. Like, why throw him to him? So I think he'll get eight or nine carries. He's fine if you're absolutely desperate for a flex option. But if you're starting Jonathan Taylor as a running back two right now, I look elsewhere like A.J. Dillon. Um, I'm trying to think Latavius Murray is an interesting with the news today that Damian Harris just hit the, uh, IR that Latavius Murray is an interesting ad there. So I just think there are better options that may not be as appealing, but may end up producing more than Jonathan Taylor at this point. God, the entire, so you got to talk. I, I'm hurt. I'm hurt. I'm hurt. Yeah, dog. Honestly, you, you brought up a good point that actually I was about to interrupt you with, but you already said it is just that Zach Moss has been playing well in place of Jonathan Taylor. So it's like, why do you need to rush Jonathan Taylor when you have a running back that's being affected in that offense so far? And like you said, that if you're not playing for much this year, I mean, obviously it's still early in the season. They still have a chance, quote unquote. But no, overall, don't. I think it's better that you're playing for a higher draft. Point. Yeah. So it's like, yeah. use Zach Moss. He's been very effective. I think, honestly, Tad, you're talking about sitting Jonathan Taylor. Maybe start Zach Moss at his place. Like, yeah, I think he can I get would. some good to run. Get if, I, good if, I was, if I was psyching, I absolutely would do that. Yeah, so I think just if you're a fancy matcher and you have Zach Moss, and you're like, okay, now that Jonathan Taylor's back, should I trust him in the starting lineup? I'd say 100%. I think you can still trust him in the starting lineup because of everything that Tad laid out, where it's just like they don't want to rush Jonathan Taylor back. They want to think about the future with this guy. They invest a lot of money into this guy. And like I said, there was, there's a lot of season left to go, and Zach Moss is looking strong in that offense too. So, yeah, Jonathan Taylor, good sit. Zach Moss, I think, is a good start. There's so much season left to go. This is going to be a long-ass season. <laughs> All right, Tell, let's get to the wide receiver position here. Who okay. do you got for me as a start or a sit here in week seven? Okay. You've taken all of them so far. Now it's my I turn. I have, yes. You, you, can, s- you can take a start, yeah, it seems um, like. I, I can. I will. Okay, you will. Yeah, okay. uh-huh. No, this is not you granting me this. I am planting my flag on here, and I'm kicking you right off the hill. 
I'm starting a receiver. I'm starting a risky receiver, but I'm telling you, and by the way, before people go, he always puts these risky starts in and he never actually backs it up. Like what stake does he have in in this game? I'm telling you this, that that exact league that I was telling you about where I'm two and four. And basically if I lose this week, my entire season is over and I'm in scramble mode. I am starting this person in that league. So I have my own personal stake in this pick. Christian Watson is a must start this week. Interesting. Okay. Okay. And now it was funny because I was actually kind of shocked when I saw these numbers because I was on the edge of like, well, is that too obvious of a start? He's only being started in 40% of ESPN leagues right now. Now I'm not, that's not managed numbers because managed is much higher. He's in about 70 sure. upper seventies for, you know, teams he's on, but only about half those teams are actually starting him. Mm-hmm. I, I understand why they're playing a tougher opponent, but they're playing the Denver Broncos. They are the 31st ranked defense against the quarterback, which means Jordan Love coming off by week should have a pretty good week. And if Jordan Love has a good week, that should mean that Christian Watson's having a good week. Now, I know what you're saying. Well, what if they put Patrick Sertan on him? Well, I'm not blaming this all on Sertan, but the Broncos, in terms of fantasy, had the 17th ranked defense against wide receivers. So I don't think Christian, or I almost said Christian McCaffrey. I don't think, uh, uh, <laughs> dude, can you imagine? Double Christian, Christians here. Okay. Dude, Christian, uh, uh, prime Christian McCaffrey gets this Denver Broncos offense. Oh, over under 45 points on that one. I think probably right around it. 45. I'm, go- I'm going it. over. I'm going okay. over. I think you <laughs> land at like 52. That'd be ridiculous. But anyway, <laughs> the, the lesser, but still good Christian Watson. I, I'm not saying he's going to go off, but I think he is going to end up in the 13 to 16 point range, which is a very easy place for, and like I say, even if you're lucky, he's, you're in one of those 30% leagues that he is still a free agent out there. This is a very easy, you know, free agency pickup or bench play where people are going to be laughing at you. But really, if he scores one touchdown, he's going to get enough targets to re- remain fancy relevant, either in your flex option or as a wide receiver number two option. Especially because ever since he came back from Zendry, they kind of uh, is the Jonathan Taylor situation. They eased him into it the first game. He only had three targets for his first game back. After that, he had seven targets before heading into their bye week. So I think that. Christian Watson is going to uh, keep building as a key part of this offense. And now normally I would say Romeo Dobbs is a huge concern because he is, but I think this Packers offense is really about to go off on this Broncos defense. So I I, I like Christian uh, Watson for at least 50 yards and a touchdown. All right. All right. It's all purpose yards. All purpose yards. I got to cover my bet there. All purpose yards. Okay. Got it. Got it. So, yeah, I think this is a good play. Denver Broncos defense is pretty weak. We clearly saw it last week when they played the, um, or not not last week, but two weeks ago when they played the New York Jets. They allowed the Jets to come back in that game and win 31 21. So, I think this is a very good matchup for Christian Watson to sort of do some damage, especially off the bye week, too. You know, he's sort of been banged up to start the season. This is a good chance for him to prove that he's healthy and he's a very capable starter. not just on the field, but also in fantasy circles as well. So, like this pick for sure. Um, I'm going to go with the sit at the wide receiver position right. here, Tad. I'm going to go with George Pickens, the wide receiver for the Pittsburgh Steelers. Okay, because he, he's been a recent breakout candidate. Yeah, so he's actually been playing pretty well, but I think the biggest concern for me is that Deontay Johnson is returning from his hamstring injury. And we all see know that Deontay Johnson in this offense is that go-to option to pass, to move the ball down the field for the Steelers offense. Pickett just had a good relationship with them last year. And I know they sort of been developing the chemistry between Pickett and Pickens this year, but I think it's because Deontay Johnson has been hurt. But now that he's going to be healthy, he's going to be playing in this game against the Los Angeles Rams. I think that hurts Pickens' stock a little bit more because overall – Steelers offense, I mean, we've talked about the Steelers offense. It's just like, it was very concerning that just like, who can you trust in this offense? We've already said that Najee Harris is like borderline droppable at this point. Like, I mean, just he's not the good in this offense. And the passing offense in relation to that is not giving enough passing protection to Kenny Pickett to then get the time to throw these balls to George Pickens. So he's been lucky and he's been getting these one or two uh, catches that then he's able to get these yards as the catch, or he's just breaking wide open to then score these touchdowns. And so he's looking pretty good at getting touch uh, points that way. But now with Johnson back and now they can sort of rely on the short passing game. I think that's going to limit the abilities or the, um, 
the availability and the opportunities for Pickens to sort of have those big games that he was having before. So I like Johnson returning. Um, you also look at the Rams defense. Surprisingly, they've been very good, Dad, as far as their defense is concerned. Giving up the seventh fewest receiving yards to opposing wide receivers this season. And in relation to that, they've given up only 16.1 fantasy points per game to opposing receivers, which is the fourth fewest in the NFL. So this Rams defense has actually been pretty good against opposing receivers. So that's another reason why I'm not as huge on George Pickens this, uh, this week here. So Deontay Johnson coming back and the Rams defense surprisingly stingy against opposing receivers. Not most sir. Who am I thinking of? Raheem Morris. Morris. Is he still their DC? He is their DC. Correct. That dude might be the secondary whisper because this is like two. Be. This is like two or three straight years where we've gone into the Rams secondary like that might be their weakness. That's part actually of the reason why he got the head coaching job in Tampa Bay to begin with is because of his defense and his secondary prowess. But just unfortunately, he couldn't coach worth anything, so that's why he got fired after two seasons. Uh, but that's a separate story. Yeah, but just yes, yeah, there might have been another reason for that. Yeah, but we'll possibly, do, but yeah. just yeah. Uh, as apparently, I'm not allowed to bring that up. But a big <laughs> sensor coordinator though, or as a position coach, he's very successful. Fair enough. We can both agree on that. So, um, no, I, I actually really, really think that's a, that's a good pick to not trust because like you said, it's not just the extra wild card of Deontay Johnson getting thrown in there. It's the, you know, other wild card of is Kenny Pickett fully healthy. We still don't know. Is Najee Harris ever going to get his shit together? Probably not. Like there's just so, there's so much, I won't say drama because there's nothing, at least I am not like I'm following the Steelers news all that closely, but there's nothing nationally wide that's like, oh, the Steelers are falling apart. But in terms, it just looked like, you know what else? I've, I've said this a couple of weeks ago. I'll say it again. As my students would say, it's just looking like the Steelers for the first time in Mike Tomlin's career. They're just kind of mid. And when it when you're mid, it comes with you're gonna have your bad weeks and good weeks. And now that we have one more wild card to throw in there, honest to God, I don't trust any, any of these Pittsburgh Steelers players. I'm starting Najee Harris against Alfred Rowe. I am so upset. Yeah. Um Steelers all right, off. All right, all right. Whoa, 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 wait. Let's play your favorite <laughs> game, a version I don't like. Over right. under six, but I'll be a, a six and a half points. How many points is Najee Harris gonna give me against Alfred Rowe? I have my answer. I'll over be under six and a half points. I'm going to say under. A, I'm going to say under as well. Yeah. I, I, I I'm going to, I, yeah. I bet you, no, because here's the thing is the universe loves to make fun of me. Just like everybody else at this network does. And I'm telling you this. It's going to be Najee Harris. That cost me against Al. It probably like, will be. It's like, I don't, be. I don't care if I win or don't win the championship. I need to win this week. It's yeah. going to be goddamn not. Cause I didn't want to, I didn't want to draft him in the first place. I was forced to. Yeah. He's going to cost me. He is. Because, yeah, Ted, in relation, that Steelers offense is quite sus for sure, too. Um, Let's get to the tight ends here, Ted. You know, <laughs> I had to. I had to throw it in there. You know, you we are your, you know, so hip. <laughs> quite hip. This you know? this whole episode has just been the Steve Bushimi. Like, how do you do, fellow kids? <laughs> Oh yeah, that is quite a exact, very perfect example of how this show is going stick, right now. Stick around let's after move. this, we'll talk about our favorite TikTok stars. Exactly, Ted. So let's move on to the tight end position let's here. Do. Who do you like as a start or a sit this week? This is probably my riskiest pick of this entire episode. But I'm telling you, to because this tight end thing is a just it's a, I know we say this every week. But the more it goes on, I'm surprised it's happened this early. Has it always happened this early? I feel like it's happened earlier this season than most. It usually happens around the midpoint of the season. Really? Well, the I always Bible felt like it was like post around, week. So. I always feel like post week 10 is when it starts getting tough. Like it, That's it's when it gets got, worse. But yeah, well, around the bye weeks, uh, like, yeah, this is this is where you start to see you that struggle that, for sure at the tight end position. You side. remember that one week, like two years ago, where the two Chargers tight ends like lit it up? Everyone was like, talk about them. And both you and me were like, no. Yeah, no, definitely. No. Because <laughs> we both knew it was just like it was a flash in the pan, and it was. Exactly. Um, and here's the worst part is because I swear to God, hand to God, this is true. While I was doing research for this episode, I was like, I saw a name, and I'm like, oh, that's interesting. And I was like, I started, I got like two bullet points in, and I was like, wait a minute. And I looked it up. I'm like, damn it, he plays on Thursday night. Taysom Hill would have been my pick. I swear to God, Taysom wow. Hill would have been my pick. And he scored 14 points last night, but yeah, 
That's unfortunate. That's the way the cookie crumbles. I'm double dipping just like you were. Okay. I said pick them okay. up on Monday. I'm saying start if you if you listen to my advice and you got them. I'm saying start them. Michael Mayer, the Las Vegas Raiders number one tight end moving forward. I will repeat all the stats I kind of gave you on Monday real quick. He has had nine targets the last two weeks. He played eighty percent of the snaps with the Raiders against the Patriots last weekend. And whenever Devontae Adams gets covered, it looks like in a typical Patriots. Uh, not era uh, Patriots descendant offense. They tend to rely on the tight end. So I think that Michael Mayer go for is going to see not a ton of targets, but a fair amount of targets. And who do the Raiders play this weekend? Amir? They play the bears and the yeah. bears while looking better. One Justin Fields is out. So Tyson badgent badgent. Yep. Which by the way, I'm cheering for badgent. This is great. If he works out, even as a backup, this is an amazing story. I saw a tweet on my way home from work today. I was at a stoplight. Don't worry. But uh, it was a tweet of Tyson Badgett last December. To, did you see this? I don't think so. Tyson Badgett last December took like eight sacks and threw two picks against Colorado Mine University. School of Mines. Colorado School, school of, of Mines. Mines. That was it. That was it. You did see this. Yeah. So it was Colorado School of Mines University or whatever. He's about to Dad, play against the race. Wild guess. You know what their mascot is? The Lumberjacks. Oh, come on. This one's a layup. Come on. It can't be. What is it? The Miners? It is the Miners. So... It's the Miners. <laughs> I told you it was a layup. <laughs> oh, my gosh. I remember when we were scouting this guy last year because he played in the Senior Bowl. There's another viral clip blowing around about his dad talking on the sidelines about him being a professional arm wrestler. And so he was talking about his son playing at school. But I remember I was watching tape of Tyson Badgett in that game against the Colorado School of Mines. And I was like, oh my gosh, their mascot can't be the Miners. But it is 100% the Colorado School of Mines Miners. <laughs> well, that reminds me, did you hear about the big uh, uh, UT change? No. Okay, so they're no longer the Longhorns. They're the Texas Texans. <laughs> What's like the Philadelphia Phillies? That's exactly what it is. <laughs> what the hell is a Philly? <laughs> Your mascot is like if Cookie Monster turned green and it's just, it's for. <laughs> what the, what the yeah. hell is a flyer? Philadelphia, get your shit together. God damn it. All right, anyway, going back to the original point, you're fucking. The miners. School of Miners, Miners. Jesus Christ. <laughs> So that's the type of level of competence that Tyson Bagent, Baggett, whatever, was playing against. And now he's about to go up against the Las Vegas Raiders. So I think that the Raiders actually have a chance for the first time all season to really blow this team out, which means a lot of passing opportunities. I think Michael Mayer is going to get – I don't think he's going to blow up. I think he's going to have a really, really solid tight end performance, especially because in three of the last six games, the Bears have allowed the opposing tight ends to score seven or more points. So, therefore, I think that, again, I don't – I like if you ask me how much is Michael Mayer going to put up, my guess is eight or nine points, but I think he is going to put up eight or nine points. And currently, he's only being started in roughly about 25 to 30% of leagues. So, I think if you are really struggling for a tight end streamer like – Murr and I are struggling to fight tight ends, tight ends to talk about for the next 10 weeks. I don't know how we're, we might just need to cut this position out, but we're not going to do we'll that. See. Don't worry. We'll we'll yeah, we'll see. Um, I think Michael Mayer is one of the more undervalued bets you can get, who still may be in the free agency pool as we speak. Yeah, I think he's available because I've brought this up so many times already, but just some rookie tight ends have a hard time adjusting to the league. And so Michael Bear is one of those guys that just took him a long time to finally get used to the offense, finally for Josh Dales to trust him to run more routes and that sort of thing. So yeah, I think we're seeing him being more involved. I think going forward, we'll see him more involved as well. So yeah, I like this start as well. Um, I'm going to go with a more higher drafted uh, tight end during his rookie draft, but... He's been playing pretty well as well, but I like him as a sit this week, and that is Kyle Pitts, the tight end with the Atlanta Falcons. Drop him. Drop him. Don't Drop it, him. really. Drop him. Drop him. Interesting. Interesting. He's done. Because I'll tell you what. You know who I actually picked up? To, so, okay, I just another trade I pulled off is I just traded for Dallas Goddard. Of course, a day after I traded for him, that questionable <laughs> tag gets stuck there. I'm like, God 
damn it. So I start looking for a backup plan. By the way, in case you're a Goddard manager like I am, uh, that questionable tag has now been lifted. But you know what? This is the crazy thing. Goddard is currently ranked. Sorry, I'm, I'm, I may be stealing some of your notes. Goddard is currently ranked as the 10th best tight end in half PPR leagues. The guy I picked up to back him up is one spot ahead of him. Do you know who that person is? I'm guessing it's Johnny Smith. It's Johnny goddamn Smith. <laughs> How is that possible? It's insane. Drop Kyle Pitts. For whatever reason, Arthur Smith hates this guy. Now, depending on where Kyle Pitts goes next, because he's going to go somewhere next, that's an excellent comeback player of the year, fantasy-wise, for our awards next year. But for now, I have zero trust. I am totally stealing your segment. I apologize. And I will end it with this. I don't trust Kyle Pitts, and so help me God, Arthur Smith, if you touch a hair on Brock Bauer's head, I will kill you. So you didn't take any notes from me because obviously I don't like Jadu Smith in this matchup either. Just I don't like the Falcons tight ends. There's a reason season. he's on my bench. Yeah, exactly. Because the Bucks defense, Tad, has not allowed over 200 receiving yards um, or a single receiving touchdown to opposing tight ends all season long. So they've been really limiting and clamping down on opposing tight ends that they have faced this season. Um, like I said, Pitts has sort of had a sort of resurgence over the past couple of games. A lot of people are sort of expecting him to now continue that trend. Maybe Arthur Smith starting to actually realize that this is a very capable player in my offense. Let me utilize him more in my offense. But I think just this matchup against the Bucks, it's a divisional game. I think it's going to be a very hardly fought contest for sure. And I think that Bucks defense is just going to be able to control the tight end again. It's like, yeah, I don't like Jonas Smith or definitely I don't like Kyle Pitts either as well. Um, I'm sitting both here in week seven. Just, yeah, I'm not trusting either of them this week. I barely trust B. John Robinson at this point because B. John's been he's, he's sort of I'm been not, on the downside. I'm, too, not, say, I'm not gonna say struggling because he's still like a solid flex option, he's but still like, been getting a consistent like at least 12 fantasy points for you every single week. So I mean that's still dependable, but just yeah, what we saw for B. John Robinson, like just a couple weeks ago, where he just absolutely blowing up on guys. I don't expect that to happen in this game either, but I do expect him to sort of be like, maybe if you're, like I said, we're a bi-week, bi-week Mageddon or whatever we called it earlier in the episode here. He's a good flex start, I think, but just as you're starting dependable running back, I think that's a little bit like, you know, unless you really have to, you got nobody else, then maybe do it. But just, yeah, I, I don't like him as much this week either, but I'm not sitting him. I think that's for sure. He's the only one I'm not saying, though. Everybody else, Drake London, uh, yeah. Kyle Drake Pitts, London's a good Smith, for sure. uh, mm -hmm. God, uh, I mean, like, everybody else on, on that offense, I'm sitting, and even Bijan's on the edge. So, like, no, this offense yeah. is in full shambles. Everyone's talking, like, are the Patriots going to get Caleb Williams or is so-and-so going to get Caleb Williams, blah, blah, blah. I think the Falcons are actually front runners for Caleb Williams right now, whether it be via trade or via actually just landing it. Um because and it will be so fascinating to see the Panther or, Oh, I guess you don't have the first overall pick <laughs> Panthers may have double screw themselves. Cause they may let divisional rival now get their own pick. Um, yeah. That would be hilarious. I'm not even a Falcons fan. I, I don't even hate the Panthers, but just for pure comedy's sake, that'd be great. But bottom line is I actually think the, the Falcons right now should be the odds on favorite to land Caleb Williams uh, coming, you know, next spring, which, well, you know, as long as they're willing to give up, about 30 percent of the team <laughs> exactly i don't know if arthur blake wants to do that though so all right ted why don't you give me your kicker and your defensive picks for this week as either starts or sits i mean you mentioned them and they're good let's go ahead and start them and by the way again i guys i'm telling you when i say things i put my personal stakes in them not all the time but most of the time and i am starting them and not one but two of my leagues this weekend, I'm loving the Buccaneers defense. This defense, oh, one, yeah. tends to, as a start, by the way, tends to step up in divisional matchups. I know. <laughs> they tend to step up in divisional matchups. And two, it's actually pretty, yeah, somewhat inconsistent, but pretty high-performing defense fantasy-wise. They really haven't blown any games so far this season. That was the toughest thing with, like, what you said with bye week Mageddon here is – like what defenses haven't really blown or like, you know, blown a lead, blown a, you know, a big performance. The Buccaneers really haven't done so. And here's the interesting thing is it's more about the matchup, right? In the last three of the, or in three of the last four games, the Falcons have allowed opposing defenses to score 10 or more points. Three of Wait, four Falcons or the Buccaneers. So, okay. So the Buccaneers are playing the Falcons, right? The Falcons offense has allowed opposing defenses 
in fantasy to score 10 or more points and three okay, of the last four got games. it. All right. Yeah, that's impressive. That's a that's a defense. Yeah, scoring no, as much that's as what I was confused. I was like, wait, 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 what are you talking about no, here? No, exactly. you're talking about the defense mm-hmm. scoring points on the opposing team. So yeah, that is that's pretty impressive then for sure. Yep. Mm-hmm. So it's only a matter of time until Desmond Ritter gets benched. If Ritter gets benched in this game, you know what that means? Uh, he needs to get benched, dude. He's so bad. Yeah, no, I know. I He's know. so bad. No. But you know what that means? If he gets benched, he threw a couple picks, which means points Probably. for you. And on top of all of this, you want to know the top two highest performing uh, games the Buccaneers defense have this season? It's against Probably the both their divisional Saints. games. Nope. It's against the New Orleans Saints, the Chicago Bears. Two pretty uh, incompetent offenses. Yeah, two we know when they, when they play incompetent offenses, they show up. There so I go. really like the Buccaneers as a very underrated defense to pick up here. They are still available in about 70% of leagues, by the way. As for kicker... Uh, you know, Emmer, I always say it. I always say it. I think I've said it every single episode so far this season. The one thing I look out for a kicker is, is his offense too good? And this is the very obvious pick, and the answer is yes. Jason Sanders is a forever bench. I said cut him with another player. I'm saying cut him right here with another. Cut Jason Sanders. He is not a worthy fantasy kicker. He's only gone over double-digit points twice this season, and one of those was at exactly 10, so he barely got there. So it's just one of those things where offense just scores too many touchdowns. It's not his fault. So, you know, it's it's just they, they're too efficient. They're too efficient to make the kicker worth it. And on top of this, that divisional matchup on – not divisional, excuse me, that tough matchup – on Sunday night against the Philadelphia Eagles, the Philadelphia Eagles have only allowed one kicker all season to go over 10 points. They've held every other kicker to below uh, double digits. So you have a kicker that struggles to get above d- double digits. You have a defense that's very good, defense special teams that's very good at keeping kickers under double digits. It's a complete disaster. Do not trust Jason Sanders because I know, I know people are going to keep falling for that trap. I'm like, it's a really good offense with their kicker. It's three points. It's not. It's not. So, Amir, what's the defense that people should look out for? And what's a kicker that those who follow my advice, as they should, cutting Jason Sanders, who the hell do they replace him with? So, actually, a good transition point for Jason Sanders. I'm going to stick to that game, and I'm going to give you my sit at the defense here, and I'm going to sit the Eagles defense against the Miami Dolphins. So, Ted. It's the tush push, isn't it? A little bit of that, but also you have to look at this Miami Dolphins offense. You already just laid it out. That's like they're very good at scoring touchdowns, that they're sort of converting all their opportunities when they get offensive drives. Now, I will say that this statistic that I'm going to give you is sort of skewed by their 70-point performance against the Denver Broncos, but the Miami Dolphins are the only team so far through six weeks of action to score 200 total points on offense. So, I mean, this team is scoring in bunches for sure. They're very efficient with the ball on the offensive side of the ball. Um <clears throat> Eagles defense has also been dealing with a lot of injuries. They've I, A lot of their players have been able to practice this week, but there's still not a guarantee that they're going to be able to play. And it's not just like on the front line. It's on all three levels of the defense. So they're dealing with some injuries on the defensive line, at the linebacker position, as well as in the secondary. So, yeah, if they're dealing with any questionable players or guys that are not 100%, you can bet your bet. You can bet for sure that Miami Dolphins are going to take advantage of the fact that they're dealing with some injuries on the Eagles defense. They're not very strong. They haven't been looking strong this entire season, honestly. Like, you know, I know they were undefeated, but we talked about before on the podcast, Dad, they're just like, it was a very shaky undefeated. And obviously, they ultimately lost to the Jets last week. And you can sort of see that some of those cracks are starting to lead to bigger problems. And that led to Jalen Hurts throwing three interceptions in that game. So, I mean, I think this is going to be a closer game than people think, but just overall, I just don't like this Eagles defense to contain the Miami Dolphins offense. Ultimately, I think the Dolphins are going to win this game, and I think they're going to be able to uh, score enough on this defense that's like, yeah, sit them for sure this week. But on the flip side, I'm going to give you a start at the kicker position. Jason Myers, kicker for the Seattle Seahawks. They're playing in a divisional matchup against the Arizona Cardinals. Tad, we've already talked about this on the podcast so many times already. The Arizona Cardinals do not are. They're not saying quit. They're definitely fighting in every single game that they're playing in. They're not they're, tanking. They're fantasy. Every team does this every season. They're fantasy nightmare fuel because, like, if you came to me or Merv, like, where are the Cardinals going to do this week? Most weeks, he and I are going to have the same answer. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. 
<laughs> very true. And it's also very interesting, too, because they're dealing with injuries at the running back position. So it's just like, how are they going to handle the running game? But they're finding a way. and They're doing all right. Um, I think this is going to be a close game. I think there's going to be lots of field goal opportunities for both kickers in this game. So Matt Prater is also a good start for the Arizona Cardinals. But I like Jason Myers more. I think I just trust the Seattle offense a little bit more. They're coming off the bye week. I think they're sort of getting healthy and everything. So I think they should be a lot better here for sure. So Jason Byers starting position here at the kicker position for sure. So here's the one um, thing that worries me with Jason Myers though, is like that, that I've said this for a while about kickers, outdoor kickers, especially in crazy stadiums, not crazy in terms of fans, just in terms of, you know, architecture with how the wind comes in. It scares me with kickers. It's the same reason why I've not trusted a Pittsburgh Steelers kicker in my entire fantasy career. And nor Response. will I ever. It's just like, it's it, that's the one thing that scares me. And I know I'm saying this as a guy that has just now said like, Hey, go for, or like cut the guy that kicks in the, like the calmest weather, you know, in the country in Miami, but still that's what worries me. But Jason Myers has been a shockingly consistent uh, kicker so far this season. And Ted, I know you're sort of worried about the weather there or potentially could be an issue. Jason Byers is playing for the Seattle Seahawks and they're playing at home. So I'm pretty sure he's used I'm to kicking in that me. environment. Well, okay. All right. No, that's why I don't care how used to it you are. Have you ever been in Seattle? No, that weather is insane. I know. I know, but I think he's probably adjusted and he could sort of make those kicks. So I'd like him this week as a starter. Okay, sure. But when he's getting hit with sleep <laughs> this Sunday, it's not my fault. All right. All right. So, all right, Ted, uh, let's quickly run through your bet picks for this week. Um, don't have to give a lot of analysis on these, but just, yeah, let's hear some of your favorite bet picks for this week. Okay. So the, my favorite spread for this week is the Packers minus one at minus one nineteen uh, odds. So let me say that again. Cause I kind of stumbled over that. The Packers are only favored to win by a point over the Denver Broncos at minus one nineteen. I actually like the Packers to, uh, beat that spread because what's the Broncos' biggest weakness? Their defense. What's their biggest? Uh, what's the it's Packers' biggest? Defense? I think it's a lot more. <laughs> no, because their <laughs> offense has actually not been that bad. Their yeah. the Broncos. They they are they've been more productive than last year. Let's say that the Broncos. Okay, that have, I'll give you. That the I'll Broncos you. have managed to put up points. I'm not saying the Broncos' offense is underrated or anything. All I'm saying is the Broncos' offense is not as incompetent. As it was last year, the it's weirdly like okay. If you're sides. making that comparison, then hundred percent they're a lot. Exactly, that's my point. Is I feel like a lot of people are saying like, oh, same old Broncos as last year. No, it's weirdly like the complete opposite. Where like their offense is somewhat competent, but their defense is completely incompetent. And Amir, what's the Packers' biggest uh, strength this year? Offense, surprisingly. Offense. So you have a team that is really on the rails right now with a team that is coming off a bye week off a really bad performance that wants to prove that wasn't just a, like their strong start wasn't a fluke. This is all the makings of a really, really bad showdown for the Denver Broncos. So I think that with the bye week, this is why I took Christian Watson. And I, I just think that the Broncos, it may be a little closer than I think, but I really, really think the Packers are going to win because at this point, a minus one money or a minus one spread might as well be a money line. So I think the Packers are going to be the Broncos by at least 10 points. So I'm taking the Packers here. As for a money line, I'm going to do the thing. Should I do the thing? If you do it quickly. <laughs> nah, let's do the thing. I don't know about quickly, but we'll try it. I'm taking the Miami Dolphins money line plus 120 against the Philadelphia Eagles. Interesting. Okay. Because I like the Dolphins to win this game too, though. Oh, I mean, wait to take the wind out of my sails there. I already said it earlier when I said that set the Eagles. Yeah, all right, all right. Well, you know what? I have stats to back it up. So, so okay. anyway, like you said, the Eagles have been very shaky, right? They have a very good record, but it's been very shaky. Well, let me break down that shaky record for you. The F Dolphins have scored 30 points or more four times this season. Meanwhile, the Eagles have had four of their five wins. Four of their five wins. 80%. Math so easy, even I can do it. 80% yeah. of their wins have come from 10 points or less. And you look at their schedule, it's dumb being the Eagles. It's really not that impressive. It is the Patriots in week one, which, is, by the way, that close win is looking a lot, lot worse as the season goes on. Yep. It was the Patriots. It's the Vikings. It's the command commanders. I'll give you the Rams. And of course, now they're lost to the Jets. So the fact that the Eagles are playing all these really not like, I'll grant you, not like, bottom cellar dwellers 
But really, like if you're the Philadelphia Eagles with as much media hype as they're getting, and this is why being a football player must be so goddamn annoying because it's like we're not saying any of this. Yeah, but ESPN is. So like they're hyping you up as this juggernaut, and really you're not playing like a juggernaut right here. But you look at the Dolphins who had like a record setting performance. And yes, I know they lost to the Bills, and yes, I know they've had a couple of letdown performances. But you look at all the Dolphins wins; they are much more convincing than any of the Eagles wins. So I think that there's a real chance that the Miami Dolphins pull off this ups, upset. And uh, yeah, I like them at plus 120. And I'll just throw this in real quick. Baker Mayfield over one and a half passing touchdowns at plus 171 against the Atlanta Falcons. Book it. Interesting. So those are Tad's picks for his bets this week. But guys, if you want our full slate of picks, I mean, I'm going to give my picks as well. Make sure you're following us on all our social media handles. You see the ticker coming right down below. You got us on Twitter at Arm of the Side 23. You got Tad, Tad, Sun 94. Got the show handle at the Decide Guys. And of course, on Instagram at the Decide Guys. So that's where you can find all of our betting picks. Um, every so often, we'll drop our start sit graphics in case we can't do an episode. Um, that's where we interact with you. If you need personalized advice for your various leagues, whether you need start sit help, whether you need waiver wire help, whether you need trading help, Whatever sort of help you need with your fantasy league, we can help you out. Make sure you're hitting us up on our social media handles. We are here to help you win your fantasy leagues for sure this year. Um, subscribe or listen to your podcast, where you listen on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Spotify. You can listen right on the LAFP Network website. Wherever you listen to your podcast, just hit that subscribe button. You'll always up to date with our podcast. If you're watching us on YouTube, we appreciate you. Make sure you're watching us. Uh, which are you subscribing to our YouTube channel? Uh, so you're always up to date with our YouTube content. And guys, make sure you're supporting our parent network at LAFP Network. They're dropping a lot of great content when it comes to the college level with the Bruins and the Trojans, and on the professional level, the Rams and the Chargers. A lot of great LA football content coming your way from Elliott Football Network. So guys, if you're already interacting with us on social media, if you're watching our videos, if you're listening to our podcast, if you're interacting with us, I mean, just anything and everything that you're doing, guys, we really can't thank you enough. And I'm not the only one dropping really good gambling knowledge here. Amur has been killing it in the gambling game as well. I He doesn't really spend because he is a, the most unselfish co-host a person could ask for. He does not want nor ask for any airtime for his picks. But if you want his picks, because sometimes I do screw up, you can check it out on Oh my God, I nailed it for the first time. You can check it on any of those socials below because we share it on all of those either on Saturday or Sunday morning. So be sure to check out us on Twitter, Instagram, and maybe even the website sometimes to check out our favorite gambling picks for this weekend. That means a MERS pick and mine. On top of that, everyone, thank you so much for listening. Thank you so much for watching. And whoa, whoa, whoa. Actually, you know what? I got to tell them a story. So, Mer. There are very few people when it comes to fantasy football I trust in this world. Like I said, okay. I I hit the fantasy nightmare scenario. My two starting running backs are out, but one definitely for at least a couple of weeks. Yes. The other out for God who knows how long because your head coach is a major pain in the ass. <laughs> There was only one person in this world I trusted to help me pull off what some call a dumb trade. I think you may be included, but I, but but your personal thoughts aside, I almost accepted a worse trade. You talked me off the ledge because I was desperate. I was getting scared. I'm two and four. I don't want to go to another Denny's. I was getting scared. I almost took the first offer. And I'm telling you guys, Amur was the one that goes, that's a bad offer. Don't take it. Start leveraging them. And I will tell you what, for the next, I'm not even exaggerating here, what, three hours? Me, one league mate, another league mate, it was like fucking draft day in there with Kevin Costner. <laughs> of like, I was playing them off each other. They're like playing me. It was like some backstabbing shit. I felt like a draft day with Billy Bean and that one scene of Moneyball during the trade deadline. Like, it was absolute madness. And the one person I kept going back to for advice was a Merck. Summer, thank you for helping me land at least a solid deal. Whether or not you agree with it or not, at least I recovered a somewhat you know, good roster that I'm convinced will not land me in last place. I'm very happy with that trade. I'm very, very happy I did not accept that first offer, which was way worse. So it's I, I tell myself as a trade guy, Amur, you're a great trade guy as well. That's what makes us such a good duo is because we play off each other so well. So if you need any help, Hit either one of us up. Hit both of us up. We're here to help you. If you're like me, you're like, oh my God, my season's done. It's not done yet. We're barely halfway through. We're not even halfway through the season. There's still time to recover. But the, only way, you're, yeah. the only way you're going to recover is if you let us help you. So as always, everyone, thank you so much for listening. 
Thank you so much for watching and please stay safe.